Hi, I'm Susan Bischel with the City of Wheaton. For many people, their pets are more than just a companion. They're like a member of the family. When it comes to emergency planning, that's why it's important to also include your pet. David Gervino with the DuPage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management is here to talk to us about some of the considerations you could make for your pets. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, um, I know a lot of people think about emergencies. Maybe they make a plan for their family or um, make a kit, like you've talked about before, an emergency preparedness kit. What can people do to include their pets? Yeah, well, it's really important to include your pets when you're getting prepared for emergencies. You know, this really came to the forefront after uh, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people weren't leaving their homes, and, and the first thought of emergency responders was that, oh, you know, people must just be very prideful in their home, and, and they're just not willing to leave because of that. And it was actually the, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard uh, that found out as they were flying, trying to rescue people who were on their roofs with their dogs and stuff like that, that they were actually able to get close enough to people who would say, no, I'm not going to go with you because I know at the shelter I can't bring my pet, and, if, and I'm not, I'm not going to leave my pet here because I wow. know if I, if I leave and my pet stays here, my pet's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where uh, we really saw the importance of having an emergency plan for your pets so that if something happens and you do have to leave your home, you have a safe place for them to go. Yeah, and I think not all people have a plan for their family, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who don't have a plan for their pet. Exactly. Okay, can you, uh, if you're faced with a situation where you need to evacuate, what should you do with your pet? Well, you want to have plans in place just the same way that you have plans in place for the rest of your family, you know, uh, for what you're going to do with your pets, where you're going to take them. You want to make sure that you have enough food for them in the same way that we encourage residents to have three days worth of food and water for, for themselves. You also want to have three days worth of pet food and, and water ready to go in case you do need to leave the house and, and take your pet with you uh, because maybe uh, you have a friend or a relative who's able to, uh, to shelter your pet while you're out of your mm -hmm. home, but if uh, pet stores are closed and that type of thing, you won't be able to go get pet food. So if you mm -hmm. have all this ready to go, you can, uh, you can bring that with you. Okay. You recommend making a kit to have some things like that, food, water, specifically for your pet? Absolutely. So we talk about having a, a kit which contains three days' worth of supplies for, uh, for every member of your family. And what we've seen in recent years is, is pets really have become part of the family. You know, mm -hmm. it used to be years and years ago that uh, very few people had pets, and then more people had pets, but they were always kept outside. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, more and more pets are kept inside. Some people actually, they, their pets sleep on their bed right next to I mean, so pets are really, uh, you know, uh, part of the family. And okay. so you need to include them in, in your emergency uh, kit and uh, make sure you have adequate provisions in place for them. Now, as far as um, food and water, what are some other things that might differ between a human kit and a pet kit? Yeah, so keep in mind that especially in hot weather, you know, pets are going to drink a lot, a lot of water and uh, they're going to overheat easier, uh, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the type of pets. So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, you also want to think of, okay, you know, where's a place that I can take my pet if something happens and I'm not able to, uh, to be home, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be a, even a big disaster. I actually, a few years ago, I was in uh, Springfield for a meeting, and it, I was supposed to be coming back that same day. And uh, the vehicle broke down, and it was a long story. I got to a horrible trip. <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't even supposed to be a trip, just a day meeting, basically. <laughs> And so I had to call someone to come take care of my dog because I thought, my gosh, I, someone's got to let my dog out and, right, and give him right. food and water and stuff. So uh, you want to have plans in place so that even if it's not a disaster, but just something happens mm -hmm. and you're not able to come home like you normally would at the end of the day, uh, there, there's something in place. There's a person who can check on your pet, and there's also food and water available. Okay. Now, how about if you have to shelter in place, if there's some sort of emergency where it's not really safe to go somewhere else, but you need to do with, uh, make do with what you have? Are there any considerations that would be different in that case? Definitely. So, yeah, when we look at disasters, there's basically two different actions we take. One would be evacuating, like we do if uh, there was a flood or something where it's not safe to be in our home. And the other, as you referenced, is uh, sheltering in place. That's the other action we would take. So we might do that if there's some type of uh, chemical spill or hazardous material release or something to where mm -hmm. uh, the air outside is more contaminated than the air inside. So uh, similarly, you want to have that kit where you have uh, food for your pet, you have enough water uh, available, that type of thing. And, and the trick with the, the kit is you, you have to find a sweet spot in terms of having a kit that's big enough to have everything you need, but small enough to where you can actually take it with you if you do need to leave. Right, right, okay. Are there any other things that medicines or I know a lot of pet owners that I know, um, their dogs take various medications and vitamins and things like that. Um, should you make sure you have 
that in your kit as well. Yeah, it'd be good to have that, or at least always keep that in the same place, as well as you know, a toy or two for the for the pet. And you know, that's one of the biggest things. Uh, uh, is to is to always keep things in the same place so that you know if uh, at, at three in the morning if the the fire alarm goes off in your apartment building if you live in an apartment for example uh, the, you know you've got the lease right there and you, you don't have to think oh no where did I put it I can't remember where I li it's always in the same place you can just mm -hmm. grab it grab your dog and, and and go or you know if you have a cat you, your cat carrier is always in the same place so mm -hmm. you know where to get it uh, and uh, and yeah having those place those plans in place in advance make it a lot easier than uh, waiting for the middle of the disaster before you start mm -hmm. thinking about it. I was looking on, I think it was the American Red Cross website, and they talked about practicing evacuations with your pet, which is something I had never heard of. Um, what would that entail, and why, why would that benefit you? Yeah, so just basically making sure your pet is trained to, uh, you know, especially a, a dog or, you know, obviously if you have, uh, depending on the type of pet, you, you know, the training's a little different. Yeah. Uh, but a dog, for example, you know, making sure that he or she's trained so that uh, they, they come when you call them, they're able to sit down so you can put a leash on and get out right away. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, and, and so that, you know, if they're not able to do that when there's not a disaster going on, they're mm -hmm. certainly not going to be likely to do that in the middle of a disaster. So just making sure that, um, you know, again, it depends on the type of pet you have. But uh, if, if it, it's a, a dog, for example, that, you know, you're able to get them to sit down and put the leash on. Or if it's a cat, mm -hmm. that they're comfortable going in the carrier, that it's not something they've never been in before. You've never tried until you've got to get out of the house right away because something's going on. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so just try, trying to uh, acclimate them, I guess, to uh, whatever you'd be uh, uh, having them do in an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I thought that was a really interesting idea. If, you know, as a family you're going to practice an evacuation, bring the pets in too, because that's what you'd be doing. So. Absolutely, and you know, we talk about that uh, in terms of uh, family preparedness, you know, each member of the family having, making sure they have a role. So who, who's responsible for getting the, the pet when we're leaving, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, again, depending on the disaster, if there's a fire, y you need to get out of the house as soon as possible. But mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we see here, you know, flooding, stuff like that, you have a little bit of warning, you're able to kind of gather some things, uh, and that would be an instance where, you know, you, you, you grab your pet and, and that type of thing, so. Okay. Um, how do disasters most often impact pets? What types of things do you see during a disaster that is kind of unique to pets? You know, a, a couple of different responses. Uh, in some cases, they uh, they may get scared and so they'll hide. So whereas a pet normally wouldn't, uh, you know, there might be some type of disaster that scares the pet so they're hiding under the bed or, or under some furniture and stuff, kind of hard to find. And then the other uh, the other would be kind of the opposite. They, they, they run, kind of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, running and they run far away. So that's why it's really important if you have a dog or a cat to make sure that uh, not only does it have the, 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 uh, the collar with the... Uh, the county license number on it, which you know, then our animal care and control could look up, uh, you know, who it's registered to if the, the mm -hmm. pet is found. But it also has the microchip as well, uh, which you can get uh, through through your veterinarian, so that uh, if the pet does wind up far away, as we often see after disasters, mm -hmm. uh, we're able to uh, help get that pet reunited uh, with its owner. Because uh, we saw after. Uh, disasters, big ones like Hurricane Katrina and even smaller scale ones, which were still devastating, like the Central and Southern Illinois tornadoes, that mm -hmm. pets ran away and it was really tough to reunite them with the owners even once the pets were found because the pets were missing their collars or uh, they, they weren't microchipped. Okay. Um, what are some hazards you can think of that after a disaster you might need to be especially aware of in terms of um, your pet wandering around if things around them are not the same? Yeah, so you want to keep in mind that after a disaster that uh, all, all sorts of things, uh, you know, uh, could uh, could affect your pet in, in, in a bad way, whether it's, uh, you know, electrical uh, lines being down or, uh, you know, uh, wiring or chemical leaks, chemical spills, that type of thing, uh, based on whatever the type of disaster is. So you want to, that's why you really want to be able to uh, grab your, your pet and, and, and keep it near you. Uh, so that it's not able to get into uh, some of the, the problems uh, mm -hmm. that could be caused by, by different disasters. Okay. Now, in terms of the shelters, I know a lot of times um, the county and, and other organizations will organize a shelter for people. Do they typically um, allow pets in? And if not, what are some ideas of where pets can go? Yeah, so pets are not typically allowed in uh, shelters other than, of course, service animals, uh, okay. which, uh, you know, our shelters would be, uh, you know, um, would allow service animals. But, but general pets are not, uh, are not allowed in shelters, and so that's why it's important that residents have a plan. Now, we work very closely with animal care and control, as well as uh, the city of Wheaton and our other municipal partners to um, have plans in place so that if people do show up at the shelter, with pets, we're able to to assist them, but it's uh, it's it's really tough with a county our size to 
have an available shelter space for every single pet. And so that's why, you know, after disaster, what we see generally is about 20% of people actually wind up going to a shelter. We're fortunate in that 80% of people displaced by a disaster are normally able to find uh, refuge at a, a friend's house or a family member's house or that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but even for that 20% that, that does wind up coming to our shelter, uh, you know, hopefully, even if their, their friends or family don't have enough room to take the people in, if they could at least, you know, say, well, you know what, yeah, we'll, we'll let you leave your dog here with us or your cat here with us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that would be a huge help just because we, we really don't have, uh, you know, enough space, um, you know, uh, to, uh, to shelter all the pets. And so that's why we really uh, in, encourage the, uh, the community to, to assist by, by making their own plans. Okay. And that's where having a plan would, would really be helpful if you knew this relative or this friend, if you talked to them beforehand and said, if something ever happened, would you be able to take the pet? Absolutely. And, and again, going back to that, that time when I was stranded, uh, you know, being able to call someone who was able to access my, my home and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and take care of my pet, that, that made a big difference. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's really important to have those plans in place beforehand. Great. Is there anything else you think people should think of um, that they might not consider when it comes to your pets also being prepared for a disaster? Just keep in mind that, uh, that it's important to have a, a plan in place, not just for your family, but for your pets as well. Make sure that you, as we've discussed, include uh, food and water and other supplies for your pets in your emergency kits. And then people, of course, can go to protectdupage.org to find out more information about how to be prepared uh, with their pets for emergencies. Okay. Does your website also contain links to other federal agencies or animal organizations? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, we do have uh, links to the American Red Cross as well as some of our other partners that are engaged in uh, pet emergency preparedness. So what other considerations as far as severe weather or any other um, things that might affect people that would be considered an emergency? Yeah, well for, for pets, you know, pets are especially vulnerable, especially, you know, if you have a a, a dog or a cat or something that, you know, uh, has a big furry coat, uh, especially out in hot weather. So you want to uh, certainly not leave pets unattended in a car, even if it's just for a few minutes to run into the store. Uh, you know, the temperature in your car is even hotter uh, than it, even with the windows cracked, uh, even hotter than it is outside. And again, pets overheat much easier than we do. Uh, keep in mind also, if you do have a, an outside pet, that you leave plenty of water outside. Make sure that you have uh, some some place that's a, a shady area so that your pet can get out of the sun during the hottest part of the day. And uh, and similarly with cold weather, you know, don't uh, don't leave your co your uh, pet outside when it's really really cold out. Make sure that the, that there's a, a place where uh, the pet can go to get out of, out of the severe weather. Right. And what are some of the signs that you can think of if you think your pet is in distress? If there's an emergency, what kinds of behaviors might pet owners notice? Yeah, I mean, especially a, a heat emergency, you'd notice them ex excessive panting and that type of thing. Uh, you might notice them being very restless, but but hopefully you're cr creating the proper environment so it doesn't get to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you're seeing those symptoms, uh, you know, unless, of course, they have some type of medical issue that's causing that. Uh, but but in general, yeah, you want to make sure that you, you have a shady place for your pet, especially in the, the summer months, and, uh, and plenty of water, and, and by all means, do not leave them uh, locked uh, locked in a vehicle uh, during during uh, inclement, uh, you know, severe severe temperatures. Is there any chance that animals would have any sort of strange behaviors or anything when the weather or any other kind of emergency? Are there some things you should watch out for? You know, I'm not an expert at that, <laughs> but I but you do hear all the time about uh -huh. uh, about you know uh, animals acting strange before an earthquake happens or, or mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, but I, I I wouldn't really uh, be the person to ask you about that. Okay. Well, I, I would think maybe after a disaster, if they're really disoriented or things like that, they might have, um, you know, aggressive behavior or, you know, something other than the norm. Yeah, and keep, that's something important to keep in mind is that just like people after disaster, you know, we always train people who work at a shelter and we tell them, you know, when, when the person, the disaster survivor comes to the shelter, they may be angry, they may mm -hmm. seem a little bit hostile, don't take it personal. It's nothing against you. They just went through a horrible experience and mm -hmm. you're encountering them on, on possibly, most likely, the last, the, the worst day of their life. So mm -hmm. similar for pets, you know, uh, pets, uh, you know, they, they like to have some type of routine. They like to have some type, some type of structure. And when their world's turned upside down, they're, they're likely to also act possibly aggressively or, or withdrawn or, or a, a myriad of different ways. So just be prepared for that. And, uh, and it, I think underscores the importance of having your pet close to you if you can and keeping it with you so that uh, it, it feels a sense of calm because it knows you, it's familiar with you, and you're able to watch it and make sure that uh, it doesn't get into trouble. Okay. 
Now, if there's some sort of um, emergency, like a fire or something where you're away from your house, but your pet is at home, you know, they need help if, if there's like the fire department responding, um, how could you let them know that there might be a pet inside? Is there anything that you could do to let the fire department know? Sure. So on the uh, Smart 911 system, which is a system where residents can register and put all sorts of information, there is a spot where you can put information about pets. Now, of course, we want to make clear that uh, the fire department and first responders in general, their, their primary role is, is, is uh, life safety of people. And mm -hmm. so they're always going to look for people first and, and take care of people. But, uh, and so it's no guarantee that they're going to you know, find every pet and that type of mm -hmm. thing. But there is a, a, a plan in place in, in terms of the Smart 911 system where people can register not only themselves, but they can also put, you know, I have two dogs and a cat in my house or that type of thing. And uh, that will show up if someone who's in the Smart 911 system dials 911. Okay. And that's confidential otherwise unless someone calls 911. Isn't that correct? Right. The only, uh, the only way to access that uh, information is uh, from that person dialing 911. Uh, and it shows up on the uh, telecommunicator screen at the uh, 911 center. Okay. One other thing I was thinking about, what about um, immunizations and making sure that your pet is up to date with um, anything that would keep them safe? So it's really important to have your pet immunized, not only, not only because it, it keeps your pet you know, safe and healthy and that type of thing, but if uh, you are going to take your pet to a, a place, uh, you know, whether it be a, a boarding place or a kennel or something like that, because you know something unfortunate happened and you've got to be out of your house for a while, they're going to want to see all those records. So mm -hmm. you know, you may be fortunate enough at 10 o'clock at night to find a, a kennel or some place that'll take your pet, but they're mm -hmm. going to say, well, when you show up, you know, make sure you bring proof of rabies vaccination and other vaccinations. And if you don't have that, you're not going to find a vet to, to administer that. Uh, at 10 o'clock at night. So really underscores the importance of, uh, of making sure that your pet uh, not only is vaccinated, but you have those records accessible so that you mm -hmm. can grab them uh, when you need them. You can put them right in that emergency kit so you know where they are. Absolutely. <laughs> and also I would think with medications, I know you've talked about um, people and knowing what their medications are and having a list of them in the kit if a pet had certain medications or needs. That would be something else they could put in their kit, correct? Definitely. I mean, that kit should contain everything you and your pets need for up to three days, whether it's three days sheltering in place in your house or three days somewhere else uh, because you had to evacuate due to a disaster. Okay. Where can people find out more? You've provided a wealth of information, but if they wanted to find out more and maybe get a checklist of some ideas to put in their kit, where can they go? People can visit protectdupage.org to find resources and links to all sorts of other agencies that uh, specialize specifically in pet preparedness. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Gervino with the DuPage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. May is Pet Preparedness Month, and we encourage you to make an emergency plan not just for your human family members, but also for your pets. For information about how to make a pet-friendly emergency preparedness plan, please visit us online at protectdupage.org.